In today's lecture, what we're going to look at is the, the second outcome, which is use appropriate analytical techniques to identify and eliminate the seven types of waste. So that's what we'll be dealing with um, today. So that's the learning outcome at the end of the study or of this model, you should be able to use appropriate analytical techniques to identify and eliminate the seven types of waste. So these are, we have something we call the sources of waste, right? Where waste emanates from. That is the source of waste. We are saying that overproduction is one of the sources of waste. If, for instance, the organization has to produce a quantity of product for specific, a specific what group of customers, and the company decides to overproduce in anticipation that it will stock and the customers will come and buy the product, then what you are doing is that you are overproducing. And that's what we call overproduction. Because you are just holding capital in inventory that has not been requested for them. One of the basic principles of lean is the pool method. It's what they call pool. That is the just in time. You only produce product that has been requested or ordered by customers. So you produce to order, you don't produce to stock. So overproduction is a source of waste. Now, another source of waste has to do with waiting time. Waiting time. Waiting time. If you have to wait for, for instance, you're doing traditional batch production. And assuming this batch production, you have one segment of workstation that is cutting, let's say we are producing kitchen stool. So one is doing the cutting. And because they are doing batch and we, are, we want to produce 200 stools, when they're doing the cutting, those people who are to join the wood, that group or that cell or that segment or that workstation that has to join the wood using, I mean, um, nails and hammer to do that. If it's taking these people two hours to finish that batch, these guys are waiting. That waiting time is waste of time. And that is waste. The other guys who are also in the supply chain performing other activities in that segment of production, they are also waiting, okay? And that is a source of waste. And we say un unnecessary transportation, all right? If there's a proper layout of the manufacturing um, plant or the office, that minimizes unnecessary transportation, then we can eliminate that waste. Because you realize that you are in a warehouse and then goods have been packed in such a way that when the customer comes around, you would have to go and offload other products or other curtains before you are able to get that. So why are we doing unnecessarily movement of items or necessarily hide and handling. If it's a forklift, the forklift is doing unnecessarily what unnecessary movement. Okay. We just want to minimize that. So unnecessary transportation doesn't help. And an example is also the fact that you have sighted your warehouse far from your production plant. So anytime they need raw materials, they need to move. I mean, a very big track to move that raw material to the manufacturing floor. 
that is unnecessary what transportation that can be what minimized. We also say that once we are doing over production, that is going to lead to over processing or processing of waste. Okay, because the customer requested 400 packs and you are doing 200. The other extra 100 has not been paid for. You are only producing it in a space. So that is over processing. You are overusing the equipment, you are overusing labor, and that order itself or that product itself has not been ordered. It's just produced in an anticipation that customers will come and buy. A lean hit producing products for stock. And then we have an efficient work methods. So if work methods are inefficient, for instance, if you have a very bad culture of keeping, I mean, tools in your toolbox. That this culture is said that anytime somebody picks a toolbox, and then we want a particular, I mean, tool in that toolbox, we cannot find it because there are no standard operating procedures mm. that indicate that, that if you pick the toolbox, you would have to ensure that you clean these tools and then you put them, you pile them in. And for every tool you pick, you must account for it. So every day you cannot find a spanner, every day you cannot find a boat, <coughs> just because, I mean, we are working with inefficient what, work methods, okay? There are no standard operating procedure. And then we have product defects. Product what defect? It's also a source of waste. Product defect. So, can you imagine that you have to finish producing a product? I want to add the last one. That is real work. You have to produce a product, and then get to realize that at the end of the day, the output was defective. If the output is defective, then that becomes a source of waste. What it means is that we cannot use it anymore. We have wasted time and energy resources, human resource, material resource, financial resources. We've paid light, we've paid, I mean, a number of wage and also paid salary in addition. At the end of the day, the product came out as defective. It is unacceptable. It's a source of waste and also real work. Now, when there's something is defective, what will happen is that since the organization do not want to just dispose of it, that was very expensive. So they will have to rework. And reworking means that you have to fix the defect. Sometimes the cost of fixing the defect outweighs the actual cost of doing the thing, I mean, new, because you don't really know what to do. So, these are the sources of waste. This can also be classified as the types of waste. So don't confuse yourself. They are the sources of waste. They can also be classified as the, what, the types of waste. And then we have waste elimination. So whilst these are the sources of waste, now what, look at the outcome. It says that use appropriate analytical technique to identify and eliminate the seven types of waste. So, the identification of the waste is what we have done. The overproduction, the waiting, the unnecessary transportation, processing waste, inefficient work method, product effect, and real work. Okay. You remember I asked you to go and look for the other types of, I mean, uh, waste aside what? The muda. Muda. And then you came out with what? Mura and what? Muri. You remember? You remember? <coughs> Mura and Mori, are you there? Yes. Mura and Mori. We're saying that one is overburden and the other one is what? The other one is one is overburden and the other one is what? Unevenness. <laughs> Unevenness. Unevenness. Now we are looking at how to eliminate what? The waste. Okay. Now we say that we can use the Kaizen philosophy. 
And Kaizen philosophy hinges on what we call continual improvement. So one of the ways you can eliminate waste is to use the Kaizen what? Philosophy, which states that waste is an enemy. In fact, your enemy is what? Waste. And it says that clearly, waste is what? An enemy. Is that improvement should be done gradually and continuously. And everyone should be involved. It's built on what? A cheap strategy and can be applied anywhere. It says waste is an enemy. Improvement should be done gradually and that's and continually or continuously. And that's what we say, continuous what improvement. And it's a Kaizen what, uh, strategy. So we can use the Kaizen strategy to eliminate what waste. So see the what we discuss. That is this is another, another, the one was sources of waste, which can be converted into the types of waste. So look at it. I say in any every organization setup, the overproduction, I mean, percentage of waste is very big. Are you seeing it? The blue. Are you seeing it? Overproduction, because most organizations want to produce to stock. They don't want to produce what the customer has what ordered. All right. Then the next one is transportation. That is over transportation or necessary transportation, which is also what another source of waste or type of waste. Then we move to waiting, which is here. Waiting and what we also have what we call uh, motion. Now, the motion is the fact that motion is movement. All right. So apart from doing unnecessary transportation in your own office. Let me give you a typical example. You have not planned the office well. So where your desk is, is such that your cabinet, where you have placed it, anytime you need something, you have to walk from maybe 30 seconds to pick that. And most likely you have customers visiting your, your, your office, maybe 100 customers in a day. It means that each customer has a folder and because you have not planned this thing well, most times you have to wake up and work 100 times. That is motion, but that waste is unnecessary. That is motion, it's unnecessary, okay? Then we have overprocessing, what I, what I talked about. Once there's overproduction, there's always going to be overprocessing. What we are processing, we don't need. Let me give you a typical example of overprocessing. So you are just maybe, for instance, um, um, producing an example will be producing, let's say, uh, a certain product. Um, <laughs> let me give a, a typical example. Let me use the kitchen stool as well, okay? So the guy cuts the, 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 the wood and it gets to the joining of the wood. It is joined. But it gets to the planing, the understand, or finishing. But the guy who is doing the polishing, he has to polish the wood to a certain level. But after getting to that level, he gives it to another person who also does better polishing, which actually it is not needed. The customer has not said that he did a smooth, I mean, I mean, uh, a smooth what uh, 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 surface. He has not said that. But we have we are over processing because what the customer has not added adds. We are trying to add, or we are doing too many handling of the product, which is not needed. For instance, over processing could be that you have a uh, you have a product that has to put it into a carton, right? Now, when you put it into the carton, one of the things you can do is to just after putting it into the carton, it is lifted and put into onto the, uh, the, 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 the vehicle 
to be delivered to the customer, right? So let's see what happens. Instead of doing that, after finishing producing the product and putting it in the carton, it is lifted and then stored in an open area. It is there. Then another PM, seeing whether a forklift lift, begins to lift it and then also take it to the warehouse. And then, but when they lift it, they, they move it to the warehouse. And then the next day, they now take loaders who now offload these items one by one and put it in the car. All these activities are happening in the warehouse. It is over processing. It doesn't make sense. Then having un unnecessary what stock, overstocking is also what waste because you only stock what is needed, you only stock what has been ordered, and then the rework. So you realize that the rework and I think over processing and motion seem to have the same percentage of waste that is found in most organizations. Okay, it's found in most organizations. So waste reduction. We are saying that fast delivery reduce work in progress and fast throughput all reduces what? Waste. When we deliver, I mean, we speed, we reduce work in progress. Work in progress is partly finished goods that are still in, in production. It's partly finished, okay? When you reduce the work in progress and you always have finished product and this product are finished and it's for the market, then you are going to reduce, I mean, waste. And then we have reduced waste. Uh, reduced waste reduces room for, for errors, emphasizing what quality. But once waste is reduced, it also creates the environment for errors to be what? Reduced. And then emphasizing on quality. And reduced inventory releases assets for other productive purposes. So if you reduce in inventory, if the assets, which are the, uh, the, the possession of the business, okay, if you release the inventory, but we use those assets to generate revenue. So if you release assets of what? The inventory, for instance, if it's mach machinery, and you are producing what you don't need, you are anticipating that the market will need that, but they have not requested for that. If you do that, if you are able to what you block the asset and you are not able to use the asset to do other productive work activity. Okay, so that is also very important. So we are saying that you can use some of these techniques to reduce waste, and there are other techniques, but there's something we say becoming what lean. Becoming lean, there is that that, that, that philosophy exists. If you are becoming lean, you can use the Toyota production system, that's the TPS. You can use the lean thinking what philosophy. Or you can do use what? The Ford production system. The Toyota production system is based on the just-in-time philosophy. All right. And that was what brought the whole concept of lean, where Toyota didn't have much money. And as a result of uh, that, they were of necessity required to now produce a small lot and uh, produce what the customer has, the order he has, he has placed. So it was not something that was a deliberate strategy. It was born out of necessity and it has become a world-class strategy. Ford production system uses something similar like, like, like that. And we are saying that you can also imbibe that soft skill of lean thinking in, uh, in work. That they think lean. They think always reducing what waste. Most organizations have in their corporate social, uh, corporate um, what they call corporate credos, which are their are, are core values. They have what they call, I mean, some statement that imbibes lean thinking strategies in them or philosophies in them. And this is what some people do. They say that they have a cliche that waste is an enemy. Waste is an enemy. So it becomes a cliche, okay? And when they meet, they say waste is an enemy. Some people even go to the stand and say that waste takes up our, our salary. Waste, I mean, reduces our allowances. So it's something they say every day and they work towards it. 
So these are the five approaches to becoming lean. The first one is value, uh, value defined by the customer. Value defined by the customer. And they say that the customer has to specify value. Value can only be defined by the customer because the customer knows what he wants. But that customer has to define value based on a certain standard, a certain requirement. And most of the standard, we use the ISO international standard, uh, 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 standardization uh, organization. We don't say international organization because uh, it's ISO. Uh, we say I is in the international standard organization. It's international organization of standardization. So the ISO uh, uh, indicates that if as a, a customer is requesting for a certain functionality of a product, it is that functionality the customer is looking for. Any other thing you add extra is just a bonus, okay? Then we say when you have specified the value, you identify the value stream. That is where you define the chain of the value added steps. So in the whole chain where the product is produced from the upstream to the downstream, the stages that the product goes through, you have to define those stages. The idea is to identify these stages. And then the third thing is now you look at the flow of the processes that this thing goes through. You compress the time required to add what value. So you look at the flow. At this stage, what time does it take to do this? At this stage, what time does it take to do that? Then we have the pool. We have the pool. Pool has to do with Kanban. Pool means that the customer will have to place the order to start the process. So you have the pool, which says produce only what and when needed. This is just amazing. Produce, produce only when and what is needed. Then the last one is perfection. Perfection. The last one, I'll change that, is, is not perception, it's perfection. Mm -hmm. Continuously apply lean principles. So when I ask the question that, what are discuss or evaluate the five approaches to becoming lean, this is what I mean, okay? Specify value, identify value stream, look at the flow, look at the pool, and then you come to what? perfection. That is where you do continuous, continuous what improvement you, you apply the strategy. And these ones are the, the notes on what becoming what the five steps, and you can go through that. That's what I've just explained. Then we have some tools we call the problem solving tools and improvement tools. And these things are very, very important. In fact, one, these are one of the uh, five, uh, one of the top 20. Um, employability skills that the World Economic Forum is looking at for uh, employers who as, uh, uh, want employees to work for them. In fact, what they are looking at is one of the core competence is problem solving and uh, uh, skills. They call it problem solving skills. And this is problem solving and improvement tools. So if you know these tools, you'll be able to solve problems. And one of it is the scattered diagram. So how can you use that scattered diagram, for instance, to be able to group, I mean, a, a data in such a manner that you're able to see the correlation, see which ones are outliers, and try to identify uh, certain key variables in there, and you are able to solve your problem. So for instance, if you have a scattered diagram, then you see an outlier, a data I mean, that is lines far, then you know that if you take the mean of that, that mean would not be a good estimate because you are having ages, for instance, between 25, 26, 27, 30, 31, and there's an age of 60. So if you add it together, you want to strike the average, that is going to be problematic, okay? Then the process flow is also another tool that we should, and I'm going to briefly take you through this. I'm going to use, uh, especially um, Friday, if we don't get Friday to do that, I'll, I'll figure out something for you, a special class that we use some of these tools very well. 
And then we have the cause and effect diagram, which they call the Ishikawa diagram. It was designed by one guy called Ishikawa, uh, uh, Ishikawa. And he came out with a cause and effect analysis where you are able to identify the contributors or causes that is given to a certain effect or a problem. And once you have these tools at your fingertips, it's easy for you to be able to deal I mean, with issues. So this is the lean house we talked about the other time, where we have guys, Kaizen as the roofing, and then we have standardization. We have one of the pillars as JIT, just in time, where well, just in time means that you will are producing only when the customer submits what an order, just in time. And you produce only what he needs and you produce it with speed and make sure that the customer leads time that has given to you, you are able to satisfy that. And then we have Judoka, which we are also going to talk about it. So you have for customer, highest quality, lower cost, shortest lead time, and customer first, and then this is the, the foundation. It said for the employees, work satisfaction, job security, consistent income, react for what? Humility. And for the company, market flexibility and profit cost reduction, elimination of waste. So you see that this becomes the lean house. The other time I showed you another one, okay? So these are some of the, the lean tools for eliminating what waste. Now, we are going to deal with this in Excel, like cellular manufacturing. We're going to play a video on it. We're going to talk about tag time, standardized work. And what I need you to do, and one piece flow or continuous flow, we're going to look at the pool system or Kanban. We've talked about this. We said Kanban is pool. Kanban, I will show you a typical video that talks about Kanban that you would appreciate this thing very well. And then we, we use the five W's and the one H. These are all problem solving tools. Quicker change over, that is the smeared. And my almighty mistake, mistake proven Pokayoki. All right? These are terms that we're gonna go through. I mean, seriously. Pokayoki, hanging car leveling and but let me just take you through just a few where we'll get to. So we are saying that for cellular manufacturing, we are dealing with cellular manufacturing, which is an approach in which all equipment and work station are arranged based on a group of different processes located in closely uh, proximity to the manufacturing, a group of similar word products. The primary purpose of cellular manufacturing is to reduce cycle times and inventories to meet the market response time. The cycle times is to reduce. So what we are saying is that we have four cells and it's able to help us to produce a certain product, okay? That product that we are producing, we are able within the cell to complete several products within a certain limited period. Rather than producing pieces and then in bulk, and then having work in progress halfway. Cellular manufacturing doesn't work that way. What I'm going to do now is that I'm going to end here and then pull a video on cellular manufacturing and then show that to you. And then we'll draw the curtains down for today. Okay, so let's look at this.